Hi, uh, welcome to the summer tour. Uh, today, I'm gonna show you uh, the 2014 NC140 Honeycrisp uh, rootstock planting. Uh, this is again Honeycrisp as the variety planted in 2014 and the objective of this NC140 planting was to look at some vineland rootstocks uh, being out of Ontario and uh, compared to some of the Geneva rootstocks that are generally very commercially available now. So this whole row has um, 10 replications of 14 rootstocks. Um, the kind of data we collect in here is we uh, measure the tree size, tree height, tree spread, trunk circumference. We pick and uh, weigh all the fruit on the tree each fall to get an estimate of yield. And then we can calculate such things as yield efficiency and productivity of the trees and general size of the trees. Now these trees are planted three feet apart. For some of the uh, rootstocks, it's kind of a tight spacing, but you will see that when I show you the individual rootstocks. Okay, our, uh, our first rootstock here is uh, Geneva 202. And Geneva 202 in this planting, um, for some reason, the trees have been fairly small. And I don't think uh, they're quite right. Normally 202 would be a slightly bigger tree. That's about all I have to say about 202. By the way, the yield this year is kind of um, on the light side. Uh, I think we had some uh, stress during the uh, thinning period and uh, a lot of these trees, you know, only have 10, 15, maybe 20 apples on them, maybe a few more. All right, next up is Geneva 4214. You can see it's a, a much bigger tree than the 202. I like the looks of it. it seems to have a nice branch habit. Um, I think it's been fairly productive and I think 214 is currently being recommended for Honeycrisp. Next up is uh, Geneva 30. Uh, one problem I've noticed with Geneva 30 is it has a tendency to put out a lot of root suckers, which I don't like. Otherwise, um, it's been really nice in here. I think it's had some of the highest yield efficiency and overall tree yields. Um, you know, a three foot spacing, both 214 and 30 might be a little bit too vigorous, but as long as you take out the big branches, I don't think it's a big problem. Um, it's got some fruit on there. Next up, Geneva 11, which of course is a, a smaller, more dwarf tree. Um, smaller trunk than the previous, uh, than uh, 214 and 30 there. Um, overall smaller tree. Geneva 11 for Honeycrisp certainly uh, would want to plant those two to three feet apart. Uh, no less than that, or no more than that, I mean. Um, but it's done fairly well in here. And again, Geneva 11 for a dwarfing Geneva rootstock is, is recommended. Then we got Geneva 41. I could say the ditto about that. 41 is a little bit more vigorous than 214. A little bit bigger tree. And again, uh, for Honeycrisp, it's probably a real good rootstock for uh, uh, tall spindle planting. One thing to remember about these Geneva rootstocks is they're resistant to fire blight. The rootstock itself is quite resistant to fire blight, so that's a, a nice thing about them. The other thing is, if I get a little tight here, in general, they don't form burr knots. There's some flaking of the uh, bark, but I think overall they're less susceptible to um, dogwood borer than our uh, the mauling rootstocks such as 9 or 26. So, all right, next. Geneva 935 has been touted as a good Honeycrisp rootstock. Um, you know, it looks pretty good. Can't complain. I do it. I think uh, 935 has been a little bit of a problem if the budwood is not certified virus free. There's been some problems with that. So it's, it's, it's uh, declined in its status a little bit. Uh, maybe that's why 214 is, is becoming more popular. Next, M9, similar in size to uh, Geneva 11. It's done fairly well in here. I can't complain. The tree is generally a little bit weaker than I'd like to see it. But other than it being uh, fire blight susceptible, which is a big knock to it, um, you know, it's kind of a standard uh, dwarf rootstock. Then we got M26, um, you know, 26 in here has been kind of not great. I, 
I would not plant Honeycrisp on 26. It seems to have some issues across the board, so I just generally don't recommend it. Next, Geneva 890. Uh, Geneva, Geneva 890 is more in the semi-dwarf category. It's a fairly big uh, tree, as you can see by the trunk here, uh, the size of it. Um, the, the fruit on it's been really nice. At this spacing, it's just a little bit tight and uh, probably better for a wider spacing or even a, uh, a freestanding orchard. Geneva 969 is gaining favor. Um, I like it. Um, I've noticed the fruit is not colored sometimes as good as it could be at harvest. I don't know what's going on there, but tree size is really nice. It's had good yields. Um, as you can see, also on this tree, you're doing a little, I've uh, been working with the uh, fruit, growth, fruit growth rate model. That's why that tree's flagged. Let's see if I can find a little tag. Most of them are on the other side of the tree, but you can maybe see a, a little tag in here. Uh, and we're measuring, been measuring the fruit growth during the uh, thinning period on these as part of a little uh, experiment to do that. Let's see if you can see that tag there. Um, Geneva 969 is recommended and becoming uh, more popular as a tall spindle rootstock for uh, Honeycrisp. Finally, I've got uh, four, four Vineland rootstocks. You got V5. I'm not going to talk about these a whole lot. Uh, V6. Uh, V1 and V7. Now I believe V5 and V6 are just too big, um, have not had terribly good yield efficiency compared to the Geneva rootstocks, just uh, too much vigor for this, uh, this spacing. Um, I don't even know if these Vineland rootstocks are commercially available. V1 and V7 have been a little bit smaller and better. Um, have not been able to readily get a hold of these again, so I don't know where we stand on those. But uh, at this point, the Geneva rootstocks are the way to go. I like uh, 11, 41, 30, 214, and 969. I think they're all very viable rootstocks for Honeycrisp at uh, tall spindle spacing. So that's the little tour of the 2014 NC140 Honeycrisp planting.